let us prepare our hearts to uh, receive what God has in store for us today. Amen. The Bible says, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to leave this time to Pastor Mundia. <laughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Uh, once again, we welcome all of you to the house of the Lord. Um, this is our first uh, service at, uh, at the city. Um, oh, after the prayer, amen. Um, it was good to see a lot of you participating uh, in these absolute prayers and uh, what a joy to spend time together and uh, crying to our God. He, he is faithful. Amen. So we honor our pastors in the house. And I see also uh, Mrs. Changwana. Let's receive her in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, with us for the first time, uh, we welcome you and extend the right hand of fellowship. Hallelujah. And can I ask all of us to stand as we honor God uh, and receive our senior pastor, Dr. Stark. Amen.
So he came knocking on my room. He said, did you hear? I said, what? He said, you have to see this. I then looked at the article and the story. And that night, I remember that impression I gave during the time when we were talking was not very reflective until I was by myself. I started thinking again. Is it this simple? I followed through the story. I started doing more research. I started tuning in to actually Bahamas television to find out more accurate details on what exactly happened. Flew on a plane on his landing. The plane hit a construction crane. And that was it. And everybody died. And I thought to myself, just like that? Yeah, just like that. Sometimes we don't want to face the reality of life, but it is given for man to live once, and the next thing he dies. Did you ever hear what I always say, that statistics show that one out of one humans die? At times it gives me great courage to preach the gospel, to remind all these arrogant people that you will die. I've never seen more attention that people give to the gospel more than at funerals. So years ago, I had Dr. Uh, uh, Evangelist Schambach, who was a great, great old preacher many years ago, talk a story about a young man who was a biker with his whole crew, total rebels to the gospel. These guys felt like there was something. See, that's the other thing about the illusions of life. This guy felt like he was really something. Try to preach to him, he would literally mock the preacher. Tell him that you know what, you need the Lord, you need to prepare your eternal hope. You need your... One day, Riding along the highway, the young fellow rode on a truck literally went over him, killed him. Schambach was preaching at the funeral. He stood in front, one segment of the whole sanctuary was filled with black jacket bikers. And every one of them in a very somber atmosphere, dark glasses and they're looking in front and saying, oh. So this really happens. Yes. It does. <coughs> so, R.W. Schambach shares the story and he said, from that day I found out why I would never be a pastor. So he stands in front of everybody in the house and he said, do you see this young man? I missed many meals fasting for this guy. I prayed for him to come to Christ. He would not come to Christ. He lifted up his leg and he tossed the coffin and the body rolled on the floor. He said, that boy made me to go hungry for a long time. <laughs> I missed meals trying to pray for him. That worked. Even all those bikers, everybody paid serious attention, and many of them were saved that day. Life. You know, how many songs have you heard of life? Many. Some people say life or oh, life. I don't know what other people say. <laughs> it's an interesting thing when you think about it, that it's really like that. When we were in South Africa, I had a talk with one of our pastors, and we were talking about a preacher called Van Rensberg. And he died. I think it was, was it last year? Uh, uh, he was very famous on television. And I knew Van Rensberg. I didn't know enough about him. I struggled to follow his teachings very much. But, but I liked it. And then I had the opportunity of knowing that Dr. Lema Duplessis, who is very close to us, taught him. He was actually his student. So one day, Dr. Lema, he sat down with me and we were talking and he said, I was at Van Rensburg's church last week. I said, Van Rensburg? The Van Rensburg that I know of. He said, I asked Lema, I said, why does he have a board in his church? He's always drawing things that I can't understand what he's talking about but suddenly raised a huge church, talking a lot about miracles, signs and wonders, and everything else. But you 
should know. One of the things that I learned then is that when he died, for some reason, his church expected him to come back. They could not fest him. The fact that he genuinely is what? Dead. They delayed his burial for many days. It does tell you, tell you something that Christians sometimes struggle with the reality of life and death and sometimes we don't know what to <laughs> We think funny about these things. He's not the first one. I remember one of my dear friends personally, whom I know in the Lord, died. And I remember when I went to his funeral, they actually had a chair for him in the church. Which they really believed he would join the service at some point. It didn't happen. Now, read Paul. Philippians chapter 1 on verse 21. Never take life for granted. Amen. Amen. And I will save no foreign gods, nor any other treasure. Lord, you are my heart's desire. You have to be sick to die. No. 
You don't have to be sick to die. That's why I'm trying to tell you that you don't need to be old to die. Life is always a gift from God. Amen? Amen. And I think that sometimes we're not thinking about that, we're not reflecting about that, and we, we, we don't even put our thoughts to it to know that we need to appreciate God and to be grateful for the opportunity of living on earth. Because it's a gift from God. It just does not happen, just like I said. The reason why you live has nothing to do with the size of your nose. Or your ability to breathe hard. No. Or the fact that you eat them very well and you do all. I mean, I've, I've done all these things. And I, the sad thing is that I am a, a very keen person on biographies. And I study people a lot. When Miles died, there were a lot of things that were saved. Some of them I know about them, but none of them could explain death. It's always a gift from God. Amen? Amen. Now, the Bible shows us things that only Christ can give about life, which no one else can give. There are only two kinds of life that the Bible assures a believer which cannot be given to any other person unless you are in Christ. The scriptures teach us, Jesus is speaking in John chapter 10. He says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that you may have what? Life. And life abundantly. So as a child of God, you have a claim on something redemption assures you. It's called abundant life. Nobody can claim that kind of life unless you are a child of God and you are, have faith in Christ. Abundant living. Now there's another kind of life that people have out there. And sometimes they think that, ah, it's wrong. <laughs> but the scriptures assure you that when you are in Christ, you have abundant what? Life. Not only that, the Bible also assures us that there is another form of life which no one else can have or lay a claim on unless you are in Christ. And John 3.16 teaches us what does it say? What does it say? For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever what? Believeth in him. Shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Nobody can give you that. <laughs> only Jesus can give you that. Everlasting life. So sometimes when people bust you, do you know when you talk between friends, neighbors, and everybody says, ah, I don't know how to put a rabbi. And at times you wonder what kind of life they're talking about. Some of it has to do with the fact that they just have a fridge that is full. And they want you to believe that they are having a great life. They are having a wonderful life. I mean, it's like you look at that and you think like, yes, this is the life. So when you look at most of the people of the world, they have a way of looking at life and they use certain things in life to measure life. The Bible teaches us that abundant life and everlasting life only in redemption can you claim that. But when you're in Christ, you can have abundant life. That's more than just breathing a very satisfied life. The Bible talks about our father Abraham and he says, he died full of years. One version saying, having been satisfied with life. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 I think about that and I ask myself, what? Died having been what? Satisfied with life. Never had a thing to worry about death again. Now you know, you know this scripture is going to interest you because the apostle Paul says, for me to live is Christ. Now put simply, what it means is that I live for the interest and the purposes of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's good. But then Paul says, but again for me to die, it's gain. And he explains why death is gained to him 
He says the reason is because for me, for to die is to be in his presence. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that something? I never thought about that that deeply. So what it means is that to live, it's Christ. And the reason why he does not have a concern with death is, is to be in the presence of Christ. So both life and death, it's Christ. It's Jesus through and through. So I live for him and I die and will be in his presence with him. So when I live my life, I live because of Jesus. If I die, I die to be in the presence of Jesus. So I live in his presence, I die to be in his presence. You see, the most important thing about life, they always say, if you don't have a reason for living, then you die for nothing. Have you heard that say? If you don't have a reason for living, then you die for nothing. The reason why you should live is the reason why you should what? Die. So Paul says, I live for the cause of Jesus Christ, for the interest, the purposes of Jesus Christ. Everything that I live for is for Christ's sake. Hmm. And when I die, I die to be in his presence. Do you know what is the most confusing thing that I probably never noticed for many years in this scripture? It's the fact that in the mind of the apostle Paul, both dying and living were the same. I, I, can't, I can't think like that. <laughs> there was no loss. Oh my God, that was too far. <laughs> There was no loss. Whether it meant die, there was no loss. Maybe that's why Paul told us. Could have been the reason. He fully understood that death should not be looked at like that. Because for those who are redeemed, to die is to be in his presence, and your departure in this life is no loss as good as your life was. Why? Because the reason you die and where you will be, what it will mean is exactly what it meant. When you lived, you lived for him. Amen. And you died to be in his presence. So he teaches that your reason for living is exactly and should be exactly the same as that for dying. Now, you know, when I was teaching this uh, in my first session that I taught it, I asked the question, so why do you leave? You will. Paul says, I will give. For me to live, it's what? It's Christ. So if I would ask many of you, one by one, because I would put them around, what are my resolutions? I want to ask that 2015. Then it's My resolutions for 2015. This year, I'm You know, you're talking about what you think this year would mean. What is your reason for living? Uh, this is the word I did. I was issue in. You know, it's like you ask, you find someone living for a stupid and frivolous purpose that you can't even imagine. Do you really think? Do you reason you okay? Do the whole hundred years. But ah, do the whole hundred. The camera check has been done. Has been done. So you know, I've met people who tell me, "The camera better be by check." The camera camera now what? What is check? I ask them this. And usually, I don't know. Do not matter. <laughs> Let me tell you, my friends. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know. Now you know. The Bible says, for me to live is Christ. Some of you may die too early. Because listen, have you ever heard that? I am more than a child of the. You have to wait a room yet. Oh, what room yet? But I want to write back on chat. So I didn't want to take a moment. Meanwhile, you're telling me, is that your reason for living? I have a good look at that scape up. Now, there's a man who wrote something. What's his name? It's called Maslow, the hierarchy of needs. How many of you have ever heard of that? Show me by raising your hand if you have ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Oh, that's interesting. Saka, <coughs> that shows me to Nelson Brusa. So people look to that hierarchy of needs, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, begins from the most basic things in life. All the way, he wrote this thing many, many years back. 
In fact, it was very interesting. Very recently, I read an article when someone was saying there is a new need on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, <laughs> and it's called digital connectivity. <laughs> said, you have no idea how necessary it is to be on WhatsApp. I feel like I would die. WhatsApp is a Zima. Not over. Better five hours. This now I'm not watching it. Up two days. I used to think it's a simple issue until I met a man in Colorado Springs one time who told me that he has been fasting technology for five days. <laughs> Seriously, I didn't know there was a fast like that. He said, "Thomas, I've been fasting." But I didn't turn on my phone. And I said, I said, completely for five days I've been on a fast. <laughs> I used to think fasting was actually fasting food, but I guess maybe he was dealing with some addiction because it does happen. Do you know that I know in the UK people get treated for Facebook addiction? Don't know about So Maslow's hierarchy of needs begins from some of the very basic needs of life all the way. What did he call that state? Self-actualization. Like the very summit. Before I started reading anything about Maslow much, I think years ago I had a guy who was talking to me about buying a property. And I was involved in the transaction. I self-actualization. <laughs> <laughs> so people of the world look at that and really they define life like that. Amen? I heard that, what is that? He's an optician, the guy, uh, what's his name, Dr. Dur Durama, what's his name? Durama Tuno. Yeah, thank you. Some of you may not know, he's one of the most wealthy men in this country. One of the wealthiest. And in fact, I only learned, you know, I actually learned that from Zimra. I didn't even know. Because the people at Zimra know everyone who has real money, not all these fake guys. But when a man owns stretches of real estate, the level he owns property, that's a high level of liquidity and wealth that cannot be compared with anything. So I found out doing a transaction with a certain man that it's only him and another man. Nick Van Hoekstra, they were talking about transfers of property and they said they are no longer allowed to just do a regular transfer, they have to apply for some kind of number or whatever because of the volume of transport properties that they move regularly. And I realized, I didn't know it's so this much rich. Do you know what happened? One time I had an American friend in this country. We were driving in Borodeo and when we came to Grandma Tunu's house, it was his first time to come to Zimbabwe. He looked at this, the house and I said, he said, that's a nice house. I said, yes. He said, well, what does that man do? I said, he's an eye doctor. He looked at me and he smiled. He said, you must have a lot of people with eye problems in this country. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. But again, I'm thinking to myself that I did hear him on a television interview one time when they were asking him about his properties and his investments. And he used a statement that I've never forgotten on national television. He said, In Nini, I may as well say, Dagapet. I've never had anyone quite say it, sorry. <laughs> but he said that. I've never met the gentleman. But that was the only chance I had to watch him on national television. They were interviewing some little funny program that they used to do with some seemingly very successful people. He has like a young man who used to run something like that. Don't, I don't remember what is, was the name of the program either. But there is a level where people, when they get there, they think, but yeah, when you know, why do you white? The Bible shows us that the only reason why you should live is you must live for Christ. Amen. Amen. 
If you're a child of God and you make your purposes align with God's purpose, you probably will have a great life. <laughs> but when the purpose is silly, meaningful, when Paul says, for me to live, did you know the part that I find it interesting is that Paul says, I am torn apart. Hey. Now think about that. Paul says, I am what? Torn apart. Grown. Do you see what I'm talking about? Now I don't find you being ever torn apart. <laughs> Did you hear what he says? He says, I am what? Torn apart. I can I, I pray God will bring me somewhere there. <laughs> Where I can really say in life with it, I am what? Torn apart. So when you go to the house, I am torn apart. What are you torn apart about? You're holding on to mother life like here. What? I'm not torn apart. I never do that way. Do you know what they say about our people? That some people who are Munuyaka Fasinga is of Tajam Kabur Toto. They have ever heard those kind of things. When they make reference to people that died arguing. Good place! And it's called a chum to which I never see. But in a great. Torn apart, Paul says. Grown quiet! It's just an issue of what. Do you decide? And I'll show you something very interesting, which is very key to what I'm teaching today. The Bible says, Paul says, now listen to this. It's actually the next verse. He says, because if I leave, watch that, then I have a chance to save you more. <laughs> but if I die, I will have to go to Amen. Amen. If I leave, what does living mean for him? Saving more. <laughs> That's what living is. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah, because uh, at least do you know uh, 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 there's so many articles that you read about. I know who's a quest for living. Now, the city of Wolverhampton is one of the West, West, West Midlands towns in, 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 in England, very close to where we live. Now, I drive to Overhampton quite a number of times. I like sh few shopping spots there. But there's one thing that I, I actually shared recently about, which I really love, like a lot, and I've never seen it in any city. Right at the center of the city, there's a street called Victoria Street. And it, it's, it's, it's not a very long road, but what they did is, <coughs> on that street, there's an entire a con continuation of buildings from one end, from the next crossing street to the next one. So they painted it and created a green board, like blackboard, this, the whole wall through and through. Doctor is if you never lights, can get which color yet. On top, it's written, before I die. So I don't know where she or anything shall know when you're up. Right, you must know that I'm so good. So every time when I go to Overhampton, I stand across the street. Read. Before I die. But I'm not whiskey, not Zingi. So I don't know what I'm saying. She's a two dollars. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know what When you think about it, put it people have wishes that I don't know what they live for. They write these things and they clearly call that their ultimate quest in life. Before I die, I want to go to Rome. Before I die, I want to spend the night in the Beja Hour around in Dubai. Before I die, I want to have a honeymoon somewhere on a Caribbean island. Before I die, I want to eat caviar. Before I die! Don't worry about it. Before I die. So you have all of these wishes. Now, that's the way I would 
ta secret yo kurara mazuri longa ukaenda na zuri mambe ba mwana asunya shit ah ta jo abi ko ide abu no monya ru no ma why should you trust it sadi da fa don't go on by ongo sa ro shiga ta ni Sometimes what happens is because you know when I'm in the table, 
auto reversa. Saca na árvore essa mágica. Tem um monte de problema, é a cruz da estrela. Listen, when you chill each other, in real life, sometimes what we almost call a loss, like when Paul talks about the fact that I want to live just to serve. That's how you actually gain life. Amen? But when you really live to preserve it, you actually lose it. Amen? You actually lose it. You don't really keep it. What's one day or two a big problem? Because you are actually living for self. I think saving is a beautiful thing because it's part of my acknowledgement to God that I received it from you. Because you don't have it. You know, Dr. Rogers shared a story years ago, I will never forget. He said a man came to him one day and said, Pastor, you have to come and pray for this man. He doesn't have very long to live. He said, if you don't come and pray for him, I don't think he, in a few days he'll be gone. You have to come and pray for him because he doesn't have very long to live. <coughs> and Dr. Rogers said, did you know that the man who was saying that died before the man we were supposed to pray for? He actually died before we only assisted a very long to what? To live. He didn't know the actual answer time. Dear. He died before that man died. One man shooting the Muyam Namati. Abutofa. It's funny, it's that simple. That's the way how it goes. And I, I believe that sometimes we think about it, life, we, 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 we think about like the illustration I used to use way back that when a man stands in church as testifier. And you think to yourself as you give your testimony that, ladies and gentlemen, I was this close to death. Maybe you're giving a description of the wreck that nearly happened on the highway when you were driving. And suddenly this huge truck came and you swerved it. The Amazon guy, I forgot that was, I that good up, good day. No. I was this close to death. In actual fact, you are closer when you are testifying than when you were during the time when that was happening. <laughs> Tomorrow is not given to us. The life that we have shouldn't be taken for granted. You must live for Christ. Amen. 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 And I pity some of you who purely all your plans about life you have nothing to do with God at all. Do you know when you glorify and say, "I'm not one, I'm not a favor. I'm married simply by having a life of devotion, and committed to not Christ." Change the words. Come on, I'm better than that. So I think most of the time, your life is totally not prospered or blessed because everything that's wrong with you is about you. You are so selfish, you know it. Come on, you don't gotta get too cool with that. I will never shoot you. I will never hurt anyone. Or part with. Or share anyway. To say it's all about you. It's a strange life, but it's a pitiful life. Paul says, "For me to live is Christ, brothers. If I live longer, it's a benefit to you." Now I'm going to ask you, "Longer than any part of your body? Nasu kafa? No chemasi?" So, so, we don't know what you're watching. But I'm not sure what you're watching. But I'm not sure what you're watching. What does that matter? 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 What does that that's the value of life. Tarasikirwa. Hold up. Hey, the view me eyes. I should put them change it to wait. Hold gas and gas. Hold it. That's all you can remember. But so far, we've done it. But it's when you're not okay. Hold it. I'm hard. I'm just trying to find out. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to change it. 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 As far as put it again, the IP again. Because I'm going to ask you, I need a 
说你呢，你该你们请。找嘛呢？叫我们他过来，不在了就。Is that all that we remember you for? For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And I want you to know that that should be your reason for living. That should be your ultimate purpose for living to advance the causes of Christ. And if at all, train yourself to it. In life, I want to help the brethren in my mind, in my heart, and in my prayers. Amen. Teach yourself that as a lifestyle and a discipline in life. Sir, when we hear you, the only place that you help the brethren is on your lips. That you don't already do. That's all. That's all that you do. Music. Why one gospel music? 
but he made that revolution as a black man. And then he became the first person also, as far as I know, who had so much worship lyrics and music that would actually transcend race. So black and white, they all found the, the place in his music. But you can take a man like that and you can spend all your time just focusing on something that is irrelevant. Someone says, now see a man, I cannot answer. What is the relevancy of that? Is that the only thing you thought about? He lived for his causes. He fulfilled what he lived for. He had a great life. A very successful life. I even read Barack Obama's words about him. Everybody was influenced by him. So we read the Apostle Paul. Uh, we read the book of Acts 1836. I shared a message some years ago about it. When the scripture talks about David and the Bible says, and when David had lived for the purposes of God in his generation, he fell asleep. And my question is still, why do you want to live long? Why? Why do you want to live long? Maybe you should find a proper answer for that today. Amen? And here's what I will tell you. Maybe your answer will determine whether you really live long. Amen? That's all I wanted to say today. Stand up. We're about to pray. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. And again, I ask myself, can I really say that in life? I pray to God that as you travel your journey in 2015, may that thought guide you. Live for Christ. Amen? Let Jesus be your reason for living. Let Jesus be your reason for departure. I read that and I say, for you were torn apart. He says, I'm torn apart whether I should stay or whether I should go. If I stay, I'll save you more and longer. If I leave, well, I'm in the presence of my neck. That's it. I tell you, my friends, life only find essence in Christ. Amen. Living for him. Living for him. Amen. That's all. That's what it is. it is all about. And if you do that, and if you live for him, then you have a fair reason even to face death confidently. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, 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 I actually remember uh, the words of Archbishop Goody. He said to me, son, there are two countries now left. Two countries. He said, he said, go to every nation if you can. He said, I'm left with two countries. Scandinavia and Sweden. He said, those are the countries that I'm now looking at. I'm looking at this old man. I'm asking myself, the passion is still there. That he's trying by all means to. And I'm thinking, really? I can't even manage what you're doing. Great life to live for Christ. Amen. Some of you do not realize that even Yango Kashem Lomarso no Tenga. Believe me, it's only right. Amen. See, in the internet problem, sir, because I really cannot. That's why I shared with him about why I promoted the bivocational concept in, in our ministry. And I said, I've always believed that. I've always believed that no matter what you do in life, if you are a farmer, preach the gospel over and above your family. What's done in this life is not worth much. What's done for Christ is what lives forever. Amen? Amen. So no matter what business or vocation 
you are part of, over and above that, advance the cause of Christ. Amen. So that you are able to say, for me, to live is Christ. I know, I don't have time for that. You can do all these other things, but ultimately advancing the cause of Christ. There must be a way that no matter what you do, can finally and ultimately translate to advancing the cause of Jesus Christ. I mean, I've listened to people that have beautiful voices, and they sing about love, war, fighting, everything, lust, all that stuff. And at times you actually wish like, I wish they would use that voice to give glory to God. They're so gifted, they have it in them, but if only they could use it. Now that same understanding is the understanding. Of, do you know that there are so many of you? Think about when I think like the Apostle Paul. How much encouragement you would need, Pastor? Do you think this is the kind of a guy who why would you come to offend Anubai? That's the biggest mystery quantity to our noble task either. So the chief is. Did you see when you read the book of Philippians, he talks about the chains that he was in. And yet he still tells the church which even my boat, he talks about the brothers, my parents are again from Kwanza. You see, you see his posture, his position in everything. Advancing the cause of Christ is superior and greater to any other cause, even in the face of offense. It still doesn't change anything. As long as the cause of Christ is what? Advancing. That's all that matters. So I need to be able to Last year, I was able to that you wish to have a poor. I shall have to wish, but it's a clar and your tower pit. Now, there's a clar. You'll be so surprised. Number one, I didn't reach it. You don't want that. I didn't reach it. You don't want to move as you will. Amen. Don't just have for that clar or a dog. Don't know how it's a pandora. And they all they were not supposed to do that. But I don't know to the job or some cheek The woman of God must arise. You are not me in the and in the midst, I have always wondered if it's not to talk to Do you need Chikara to do it in Basarama? No. You don't. Now, we have been in the church for 25 years. Can I put one? Put a pin in one. I'm sure. Can I put one? Yes, yes. As a church, you can't put a pin in one. And what you are able to actually do for God. None. You can serve God better. Sometimes we serve God much better. Who's not you got? Live for Christ. Amen. But you can't put that member of church with us. I was up with two people in here at Kura Stereo. Because he stands in the Kura and he goes to the Kura and he comes.
one day you are going Amen. The number of the job you want. She's not quick. Mom loves cash too. I want you to pray for yourself in 2015. Trust the Lord that this will be a year that we will live life to the fullest. Life that is rewarded by God.